بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our community. Um, just like every other day, we bring you a new topic. So today's topic is Journey to Islam. One of our friends with us is an amazing person. We'll hear how he became Muslim and his journey, how it went up to here. Um, many of us born Muslim, we took everything as a granted, that we are safe, we have salvation. Are we really thinking about what we're doing, is our practice and our faith as a mixes or not. We need to look into this. And some of us, myself, um, in late coma, practicing person. So it would help if you are watching us and try to learn and practice, inshallah. Without any delay, I'm going to go to our guest. Um, Brother David Daoud, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our show. I'm glad you uh, accepted our invitation. And um, the topic we just announced uh, that your journey to Islam, um, hopefully, inshallah, will benefit lots of Muslims and people are watching around the world, uh, um, maybe thinking about it, or um, if they have any information they want to know about Muslims, probably they will get something from you today. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, so who, David and um, Dawood, can you tell about yourself? Yeah, um, well, yeah I'm, I'm originally from Austria. Currently okay. living in London, UK. So, um, I'm now 20, 24 now. I had to think about that quickly. Um, and yeah, I mean, I work uh, in IT, just doing stuff there really for the most part. Otherwise, yeah, I'm, I said I'm from Austria for more of a rural area. So it's quite different, obviously, to the city here. I became Muslim uh, last year in August, if I'm not completely mistaken there. And yeah, I mean, for now, obviously, I've been Muslim for a bit over a year. It has been going well, alhamdulillah. No problems so far, everything quite all right. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. You know, we are really um, appreciate your, um, that you became Muslim and welcome to the Ummah. Um, I'm sure your journey will take us a lot, of, lot far than where we were. You know, um, I'd love to know, how did you hear about Islam? I'd love to know that. Yeah, um, it's, I guess, quite common in a way. I, Initially, I had a friend um, online while I was still in Austria who I talked to for a while. And at some point, obviously, because it's Muslim, I was um, okay, at some point getting interested in it, asking a few questions. Um, then, after a while, I got referred to another friend, a very good friend of mine now. Do you remember the questions you, what kind of questions you asked him? Do you remember them? Or you um, initially, it wasn't so much about questions, it was more about um, just getting to know like, in, like a general kind of thing about it. Because before that, obviously, I didn't know very much about it. I know some things here and there, but nothing proper. So it was more at the beginning, like, having a general feel about what is Islam is about and obviously how people act as well, because how Muslims are. Because where I'm from, there are just no Muslims around, really. There are only, like, a few here and there, and most of them have kebab shops, which are delicious, by the way. What was your um, faith experience before uh, Islam? What was it like? Generally, what was um, it like? Were you a religious person? I, um, what was it like? Mm, I would say I was religious in a way that I believed in God. So I was quite sure about this. However, I wasn't practicing. I was a uh, Catholic before. Um, but I went to church maybe once or twice a year, begrudgingly for the most part, because it's kind of boring for, the most, for most people even. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't describe myself as very religious before at all. So if you describe before Islam, if you describe God, how was it for you? How would you describe it? I don't even know, to be honest. I, before that, I never really thought too much about, like, the, the, about God in a way, like who is he, what is he, all of this. It was, because for the most part it was, as I said, like, I didn't really look into it very much myself at the beginning. I wanted to become more religious for a while, but I never got around to do it. And... Yes, it was always a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a thing where just I never really got into it so much. I just never really looked into it. 
do you guys, I mean, everyday life in your family or in your country, do you guys talk about God a lot in no. that age? No. No. That's also the thing, it's just so um, rare that anybody talks about God. And if you actually meet somebody who is very practicing, like um, a teacher of mine, she was very practicing, a uh, Protestant, um, people look at them sometimes a bit funny because it's like, ah, oh, why do you do this, like, so outdated? So mm -hmm. it was really never a big part, even though my mother was a religion, is a, was a religion teacher in school, even she wasn't that religious to begin with. She knew a lot of things. I uh, also helped in church a lot, but never really, we never really did much together in this regard. But even if you're religious, what can you do? What do normal people do? When you say religious, imagine someone is religious. What do you expect from them to I do? Mean, in terms of Christianity, of course, yeah. um, I would expect someone to go to church, not, maybe not every single week, but definitely go to church okay. regularly, um, pray, and also live by the rules okay. to some extent. And at this point, I've not seen people living by the rules back home at all, by Christian rules or like even old rules at all. It's mostly a cultural thing at this point. Okay. I have a, a difficult question for you now. Please go ahead. Before I um, became um, Tukyo Shahada, what were your feelings about Muslims? Um, <coughs> how did you see them? Very negative quite negative it was because obviously where I'm from is a very like countryside very small we don't have many Muslims around and the only Muslims you hear about is obviously on TV and the internet and it's usually bad things so we have obviously a few Muslims around but those and I've heard it from other people as well and um, those you see have kind of their exception rather than the rule so like, obviously you know, just normal Muslims that like, going about their day those are quite often seen as exception rather than the rule, because the rule is then like something negative. So if you see a Muslim man with a beard or a hat or long, long mm. dress on, what would go through your mind? So I've, I've never seen is one before I came to London. Oh, you haven't <laughs> no. seen them. When you come to London, then how was it for you? Um, at this point, to be fair, I was you already very interested, <clears throat> quite positive about it as well. So before, if I had seen someone, you would feel like, especially in Austria, because we are quite conservative there, you would feel like, ah, oh, what are they doing here? You know, it's our country kind of way. If, uh, when was the first time you heard about Islam or Muslims? In Can general, uh, like when I was a child, obviously, because my mother, as I said, a religion teacher, she talked about it briefly here and there, just like obviously that Muslims also believe in Jesus. And, but that's about that. So that was the first um, thing I really heard about them, that just they exist. Did she ever explain how we believe about Jesus? No. Never. Okay. It just wasn't an important thing for like religious class because it was mostly about obviously Catholicism. Okay. Next journey, the, um, do you have any, before Shahada, do you have any memory that it clicks in your head before you take the step to take Shahada or want to revert to Islam? Did mm. you have any memory that clicks? negative one I want to know first. That, am I doing the right thing? I used oh. to know about them, they were uh, murderers, they were extremists, <laughs> they were jihadists, this kind of thing. Um, were you um, scared of anything? Not necessarily in this regard. It was for me because at this point when I was ready to take Mashahad or very close, I already had known Muslims for now about two or three years at this point. So obviously my, most of my preconceptions were gone at this point. During that time in between, I, I was a bit conflicted because obviously you hear all the things, you still have this stuff in the back of your mind, uh, but then obviously you see the reality of just normal people, just Muslims being Muslims. And there was a bit of a, as I said, like a bit of a conflict in my mind, just being a bit uneasy about it. But over time, obviously, the more, about research, the more I researched it, the more I actually knew people as well, the less obviously the more I knew uh, that what I thought before was basically wrong. How, how was the interaction with Muslims before you became Muslim? Interaction I, with the people you know, asking about I, the questions? I met maybe three or four Muslims before that. And one of them was a former class, a classmate of mine from, I think, was secondary school. Um, he was uh, from uh, Chechnya. But then obviously talked with him here and there, but there was nothing going on because it was just like, yeah, it's just a classmate basically met him a few times, but that was about that. And then 
obviously some other classmates later on in school, but they were mostly uh, not that practicing. So I never had um, really seen like a proper practicing Muslim, or never talked of him at least. Probably seen on the street, but not so. The first time you met a practicing one, what was, what was your going through your head? Mm, it's just like, oh, interesting. Interesting. I've never like met someone be like this before. And then obviously, mm. when I talked more and more, it's like, wow, it's actually better Christian than most, peop than most Christians here. Wow. So give me, give me a specific, um, it would be nice to know, um, you found someone different, but mm. more like your ideal a kind of person, probably. Yeah. You want you to become religious. What did you pick up on him, that he was different here, better here, not better there? What did mm. you pick up on him? It was... You can mention the name. I'll, I'll be ah, it's, I mean, that's fine. Okay. Okay. But it was mostly about, um, about personality, just how, obviously, he conducted himself and all of this, like just how it was in terms of conduct. And obviously, all this contact, con conduct uh, was also grounded in the religion as well. Wow. And it, it, this really, in the beginning, was the, had the biggest impact on me. Um, that just obviously seeing someone that's properly practicing a very good person, a very good personality. Um, what kind of question did you ask him? Like, did you, first time, I, I wonder if you were asking him about jihad or, or the hijab or woman. Difficult one. People normally ask why yeah. he's there for. Did you ask him questions like that? Oh, good question, actually. I can't remember. I don't think I asked those kinds of questions because at that point, I, because it was, still a, it was a good friendship, but I didn't really ask these questions so much about it. Uh, later on, um, I asked about the stuff, or oh, it was explained to me as well. But at that point, I already had lost most of my negative views. So it was very like slow, slow progress in total. So it wasn't me going in and like asking questions immediately. It was more like over time, I just uh, started to learn more and more. Okay, before we go to Islam, I just want to know, understand something that, you know, um, you said you were Catholic, so, you know, we know that if you do something s sins, you normally go and confess, isn't it? <coughs> Have you ever yeah. done that yourself? Yeah, a few times. Um, How does it work? I mean... I, you literally just go into the small, um, it's like uh, on the, in the church, um, on the side, like uh, in the walls, in the walls, there's like two, two or three doors, I can't remember now exactly. Um, and basically, you go in there. The priest will sit there behind like a Cottons. wood, wood or okay. something, um, something where you can see through a little bit. But depending on the church, I guess how they made it. And then obviously, there's some stuff you say, and I can't remember what it was. Um, obviously, some stuff you say, like some small prayer and something, and then just basically confess your sins. And then the priest will tell you you're forgiven. How did you react um, that time? I mean. Yeah, to be fair, it was when I was a child because you just do it as part of um, like kind of part of um, okay. your first communion and all of this. Okay. I think it was first communion or confirmation. I can't remember which one it was, honestly. Um, but you just do it because that's what's just how you do it. It was not much thinking about it in this regard. How do you feel now then? Imagine you're doing it now. How do you feel? Because you're talking to another person, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's maybe a good person, mm. but how can he forgive your sins? Um, yeah, uh, it, it doesn't make sense, to be fair, okay. in this regard. I mean, I get the, the thing behind it in terms of like talking to people helps. Like if you have a problem, you talk to people about it and it helps you. So I get the reasoning behind okay. it, I guess. But obviously, in terms of religiousness or religion, it doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, your last step towards mm. Islam, what was your last steps? Toward Islam, how was your mental um, uh, position? How was it like? Because you are taking a big step. Yeah. Um, for me, it was really, in the end, um, the biggest question because I agreed with like the the concept of God for the most part already. So there wasn't really a big change okay. for me in this regard, or because the Trinity for me, I never really believed in it properly. Like I just thought, okay, that's how it is, but didn't really think about it much. And then the end was really uh, about the prophethood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was really the, the main part that held me back, but then also made me become Muslim. So as soon as I actually believed that he's a prophet, 
that was it, because at this point, you can't really not be a Muslim anymore. Can you, uh, can you um, explain more um, openly, mm. why did you believe that he's a prophet? And um, this is a very powerful point, actually. Mm. What made you so certain that he is a prophet mm. and peace be upon him, and that you changed your religion? Yeah, it was actually it was actually one of the questions that I did ask uh, my friend about it, um, because he made like it was very nice of him. He made like a small presentation over Zoom, like a proper presentation with like long lines of text and everything for me. And it was a question, obviously. Then because I've I've, I've read before that, and you know the different like reasons people give, or like, especially like non-Muslims give for why he's not the prophet um, in terms of like ah oh, he's bad in this way, bad in this way, bad in this. He just uh, learned everything from a priest, he just uh, got it from here, got it from there, uh, just made it up to some extent. Uh, but for me, I asked him this and obviously he explained it as well and I looked into it myself afterwards and for me it was the process of elimination where basically I took one of the claims, looked at it and just thought, okay, it doesn't make sense. Just from what I know, from what I see, like this doesn't make sense, the next one doesn't make sense, this one doesn't make sense. So at some point I came to the last option that the Prophet is a prophet. And at that point, that was for me basically it. Did you feel that in that time, did you feel any um, difference within yourself, like any spiritual power behind that, or someone guiding you? Mm. Did you feel anything like that? Did no. you feel your calm or mm. your anxious? What was it? I was very anxious. When I actually okay. took my shahada myself, so I did it first at home in my apartment, just like I was say it myself, and then later on I came to the, mo to the mosque and obviously got like proper certificate and everything. Um, but first I was very anxious because obviously in the back of your mind, for me, because I was not, I would say I'm not, I wasn't 100% emotionally there as well. So I still had like the anxiousness like, am I doing something wrong? Am I really right here? Am I really correct? Um, but in the end, I really said, because I had been thinking about it for a long time at that point, I thought, you know what, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Because I'll always have those doubts if I don't actually do it. Um, and that was for me, that thing in this regard, yeah. Uh, you done your shahada in, uh, for, in the mosque in front of a lot of people, right? Not a lot of people, okay. thankfully not. I would be very way too anxious for that. Okay. <laughs> um, um, it was. Um, I invited some of, the, uh, some of the brothers I know, of course, like some of, um, also with the one brother who helped me a lot. Okay. Uh, he basically organized it with uh, Sheikh Abdul Qayyum here. Um, he organized, so I think it was during COVID, still during COVID, so there was nobody there. It's just me and uh, 10 brothers or so. And yeah, just that. And then just did it in the main hall with nobody there, which was quite nice and private. You know, that's the magic line, isn't it? Ashadu Allah, ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, ashadu anna Muhammad and abduhu rasul. This is one of the sentences that changes people's life. Mm. You know, we believe that if someone becomes Muslim, all his sins are forgiven and he becomes like a baby, pure again. And uh, once you start doing good stuff, all his sins can be turned into a good stuff as well. In, in, so it's amazing that this is the key to the Jannah. Hmm. And it's like a SIM card, isn't it? <laughs> like you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tell me about that night. I mean, how did you feel? You took the Daniel Shahada. <coughs> now, how did you feel? Was when I took it home, you mean? Yeah, how did you feel after that? I'm in a way very relieved because it, f it felt like something that I had been thinking about so long, I had been thinking about it for so long, about like whether it's good or wrong, should I do it, should I not do it, I just did it. So I just feel like, ah, I'm done, I, I did it. All the, the, the worrying about it kind of was done for, in a way. Um, it was the, the biggest one was relief, but also just a bit of a, it felt a bit surreal. Like it didn't feel like proper real yet, because obviously it's just like I did it, I said it, but at the end, yeah, that's about that. Um, after I said the shahada, I called up a, a friend of mine, and obviously told her, oh yeah, I took my shahada, Mashallah. which made me surprised, and they were like, oh wow. <laughs> and then obviously I asked, uh, yeah, can you, uh, can you like organize a, uh, a shahada for me, like a proper one at the mosque? Alhamdulillah. What would your first dua? I can't remember. Okay. I have no idea. I was, I was quite, uh, as I said, like very nervous, just very, in general, like it was very emotional moment. So I don't remember 
everything about it, just because it was a bit all over the place. I'm going to ask you a personal one. I want to learn something from Go ahead. Here. When you were doing your Shahada, mm -hmm. always the devil or the evil, he plays his, mm. all his games within that time. If he takes it, then he, he becomes one of the warriors against me, <laughs> the evil. What was his game? Did you, did you notice that someone playing within your heart, mm -hmm. emotions, don't do it, don't do it? How do you, did, you, did you notice anything someone's playing about? Mm, not directly, I would say. I guess the, the biggest thing again was just any whispers, any whispers, doubt. mostly any doubts. That's if what I, it does. Yeah, it puts yeah. you in doubt. Any whispers, any dreams. Did you have any dreams before that or anything that positive, negative? Um, that you helped to, because w honestly, I, I believe that you are guided towards mm. that. You are guided towards Islam or you are yeah. guided, someone did, something did. Okay. When Allah chooses someone, He actually. He says, when I choose someone, he finds a way for them because he wants it and he chose to do this. You chose to become Muslim. Mm. Myself, be born Muslim. It's not the same thing. It's not the same reward as well, to be honest. <laughs> I took it as a granted and that's why I'm, I'm not good as you, to be honest. You choose to do it. You chose Allah and that's the difference between me and you. And when I become practicing, I choose to practice. That's different. So people who choose this, their reward and their actions are different than the one just being one. Mm. That's why you will find most of the Muslims are lazy. Most of them lazy. We're not representing Islam at all. We may be Muslim, but am I a, a, a really Muslim? You know, that's, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Did I stop lying? Did I stop cheating? Did I, am I still messing around? Am I still playing? things I shouldn't do, do you get me? So mm -hmm. I haven't left anything, I'm Muslim. So it doesn't make any difference. Your journey, the only thing I've noticed was, you met someone that he practiced his din, and if, you know, you had attraction towards that. Mm. So majority of Muslims, I don't see, we practice that din properly. So I was, did you have any whispers and stuff like that, doubting? Did you, um, did you feel that someone is playing with you? Did you find anything like that? Not so much okay. in like directly feeling someone is playing with me. Not so much, but for me it was really a lot, just a lot of doubt and a lot of uh, obviously um, thinking back to Christianity um, because of that's how I grew up. If like, I would say, am I doing something wrong in this regard that am I now abandoning like God's religion? Because obviously at this point I wasn't, as I said, like not 100% Sure, so obviously there are the doubts of like, am I going to the correct direction here in total? What if I'm wrong? What if this is wrong? What if that is wrong? Just a lot of doubts in general. Okay, it's that's normal to be honest. That's yeah, it's, normal. It's, it's, it's normal. But and that's where the whispers comes from, Shaitan. Yeah. That's what we believe. It was, but otherwise I have to say that there wasn't like anything that stuck out that I can remember that like pulled me away. I think it was, it was mostly myself in the beginning, because um, I wanted to learn more, and then at some point I wanted to revert, but I somehow pushed myself a bit too hard towards it, and then I had to actually back off and say like, okay, now I have to actually relax a bit and go at the proper pace, and not just like, just because I want to know now, just like go into it too much, too quickly. Okay. The, what was the most surprising event after accepting Islam? The most surprising event? Yeah. The most surprising Anything. Event. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking just now. Um, Do you I remember? I guess it was um, also like coming, I guess a lot of like, uh, wouldn't... Don't positive, know, negative. Yeah. I mean, if it's about negative, then it was really the most surprising was um, telling my parents. Because obviously you think about this, like how you tell them, or how people react in general, and it's, in a way, it's always surprising how people react because people react differently. Like my father, for example, didn't really care so much. My mother was quite against it for a while. So the most surprising was, I guess, how my father just didn't care. Okay. It was very interesting how he just like, yeah, whatever. Okay, we're going to stop you here. I'm going to start on that when we come back from the mm -hmm. break. Dear brothers and sisters, um, we're going for a small break. Stay with us and all the way you will learn something very special. So don't go too far. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again. Um, we thank Allah for, uh, we have an amazing guest with us today and we were talking about his journey towards Islam. And it's really beneficial to me as well, like I was a born Muslim, but I haven't achieved what he achieved in one year. And um, I love all of you who are watching, if you're Muslim, please practice your religion and that impact would uh, happen to others who are watching, looking at you. And if you're claiming Muslim and you're not even practicing, that impact will be very negative in light of Islam as well. And people are around you, they probably would say, look, you're claiming to be a Muslim. Is that what Muslim looks like? Why would I want to become a Muslim if you are lying, if you are cheating, if you're backbiting, if you are um, stealing, whatever, you know, negative line. So I want to um, welcome you uh, again, Daoud. I want to welcome you again, sir, and it's really been honoured that you spent time with us. So before we went to um, the break, we were talking about, you said it was difficult to announce to your parents about your changing your religion. Mm. Um, we call it revert. The reason is that you've gone back to your original uh, um, fitra religion that you're born and believing in, this, in God. And people change it by the, because of the culture, whoever they're born, they they pick up that religion. So you've gone back to your own original religion again. So tell us about how we, how was the reaction from your parents? Yeah, I mean, as I said before, of course, um, my father, he I literally said, I don't like it. But then he, that was it. He, he just said he doesn't like it, but he doesn't really care either. So for him, it's more like, whatever I choose to do, as long as I'm happy, kind of way. Um, also, I have to mention, obviously, he, he, he's an atheist. Uh, inshallah, at some point he might be Muslim. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, no. so for he he was very, um, I would even say to some extent supportive. Um, obviously, just do what you want, do what you feel is best. Which Alhamdulillah, I was very happy. Obviously, that he. How was the relationship with him before? Or good, <coughs> good. Enough. Okay. Yeah, my relationship with my parents in general is, I would say, very good. Like, we uh, talk about everything. We have no problems with each other. There's no. Um, Massive things going on between us, except the like occasional family, family problems that everybody has. Now, alhamdulillah, I really happy to have them. Of Humble. course, as my parents, I really love them, really do. And yeah, of course, that made um, telling my mother even more difficult because I know she also had quite negative views about Islam um, before. Don't know about yet now, to be fair. Um, but obviously, I knew that it's going to be in some way a bit difficult. So when I was back home. Um, last year, I told them at some point, first my father, then my mother, and I said my father was quite okay with it. My mother um, was first quite silent about it, so very like, I guess instead of shock, she said herself at the beginning, <laughs> because she, you know, like, her son became a Muslim, that's just not the thing. Um, later on, she got quite angry because she was asking things, obviously, in very, like, emotional state, uh, she said some things that obviously hurt me quite a bit. But, but you understand where she's coming from because I she's from a different it, faith. I, I understand it. Like, it's not that she I probably thinks that you took their of wrong course, steps. Of course. So yeah, it's, it's not that from I, the mother views mm. where she's coming from, uh, we, I, I genuinely have a respect for that because she yeah. loves you. Of course. Now, I, I don't blame her at all. I really don't blame her at all because it's something that every parent would be mm. shocked, especially when it just comes out of the blue in a way because I didn't tell them before I was looking into it didn't tell them about me reverting as well because I was I knew like how my mother would react so obviously I kept it quiet but at some point you can't or I don't didn't want to keep it quiet anymore I didn't want to obviously keep pretending not to be a Muslim uh, but no after this it was like the the one it was like one evening where it was a bit bad but otherwise afterwards um, like the love of a mother overcomes everything really so of course. there was Afterwards, there were some, some small things here and there. Obviously, she asked some stuff, my father asked some stuff, but alhamdulillah, after this, it just got better. So, Did they see the change in you, like, before and after? Did, you, did they feel that you're changed? Or um, have you changed anything? And not too much, to be honest. <laughs> in terms of um, how I'm with my parents, I'm obviously trying to be better, just in general, but um, even I asked my parents, and they said, like, no, you're for the most part the same person. But were, also were, you, were, you, were you drinking? Were you dating before Islam? 
Um, I, I was drinking very rarely, so I was drinking with one, literally only one friend, uh, once every two months or so. Um, before that, I had like some times where I obviously drank a bit more, but it was very rare and it, it never really was for me to begin with. I never really liked it so much. Uh, in terms of dating, um, well, it, kind of, it, it was some stuff in the past, but uh, that's Nothing that. Nothing serious. No, no, no. So um, <clears throat> you were talking about, so when you, were, when you declared you're Muslim, how, how was it like eating food with your parents in their home? Because it was difficult, isn't <coughs> it? How was it for you? I'm not sure if it was difficult, but I'm sure suddenly mm -hmm. you eat halal and they probably finding it. How was it? Um, I mean, when I told them, or when I came back home, it was the first time I came back home after I was moving to London and reverting. Um, I just initially told them I'm vegetarian now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> which was quite, which was the easiest way to do it okay. because obviously in Austria, I mean, there is halal meat I found out later, there are some stores here and there, but it was the easiest way to just tell him, uh, currently I'm vegetarian, I don't know what the reason specifically I gave, just, and then it was easy enough because I think it was after summer, it was August, October, something, I think October or November, where we still had quite a lot of uh, vegetables that my mother, uh, we grow ourselves at home because we have a small like garden or a small field behind our house. So it was uh, a lot of vegetables around and during summer my parents are basically vegetarian because we have so much stuff to eat. Okay. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, one brother. How did he react? He doesn't know. He doesn't know yet. He lives with, with his wife alone uh, and so there was never really a time to tell him and also okay. not a need what, so far. What do you think he would react? How, how would you think he will react? You know, he's um, your brother, how would he react? I'm not sure, to be honest. He has also quite negative views about Islam, unfortunately. Um, but I think... Who would you blame for the negative views? Would you blame Muslims or would you blame the media? Or what, what is it? I mean... <coughs> I think a lot of it is... You could, you, you could easily say it now because you're a Muslim. So you yeah, can say yeah. anything to Muslims. You know, we, we won't be offended. Yeah, no, no, no. Because I, we are community, one community uh, now. I think so. Yeah, in Austria, I mean, and now obviously it's more specific to Austria. Um, a lot of it is obviously historical as well, because obviously Austria and uh, the Turks were always a bit oh, each other's yes, throat. Okay. So like a lot of it is also that, I think, in Political. general historic stuff. But then again, it's, for the most part, I think just if you don't know something, you don't particularly like it. And if you then don't know something, but only hear bad things about it from you know, media, on Facebook, whatever it is, uh, it just kind of natural that then people will hold such opinions. I mean, some people more, some people less. Um, then obviously compared with other like political views or whatever it comes about. I guess it's different for everyone. But it is true though, isn't it? There are some Muslims um, um, extremists. Yeah. There are some Muslims actually <clears throat> doing bad things around the world. Mm. And if you genuinely look into it, they are somehow making so loud who how only a few bunch of people somehow turn the whole religion into a negative yeah. lens. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't always blame people who see media and Facebook and all that mm -hmm. stuff, because there are people out there similar to any other community as well. Yeah, I think, obviously, with like, obviously the, it's usually a loud minority in, in general. It's not just, obviously, with Islam, it's everywhere. It's always a loud minority that um, makes uh, one like group seem bad, so it's obviously this is very normal. I think obviously it's a, it's a problem that obviously it is going on, but I just don't think it's like the main thing because other things are happening as well. Like other groups have problems as well, and it's not talked about in such a negative light. So I think a lot of it is just because it's a foreign religion. It's something foreign, and people don't mm. initially don't like foreign things, like people things they don't know about. Um, obviously, not that it's not a problem, but it's just what I've seen for most people. Because as soon as people start talking with Muslims directly, personally, even people who don't like Islam usually don't, at least from my experience, don't have a problem with them personally. It's usually the, the image they have in their head that was either they saw one way or the other. Um, accepting Islam, you knew that you would have to, um, your parents will be an opposite. Mm. Um, your old friends and community will be opposite and their reaction will be negative. Do you think it's worth it? 
Yeah, of course. And for me, it's really, in the end, it's like what is true and what is not true. So if, and it was for me also the reasoning, of course, how I said, how I came to Islam, the last option for me that made sense was that Islam is the truth. Uh, so at this point, it would be nonsensical to not be Muslim. If, if you believe something to be the truth and not act upon it, it's just hypocritical. Yeah, because you've also done the research, isn't it? It's yeah. not that you, someone told you and you've done it. You've done your research. Yeah. And based on that, and you find the truth and yeah. you accepted it. No, it's Beautiful. Um, do you, uh, another homely uh, question, do you pray for your parents? Yeah, a lot. I, think I would say, yeah, every day, obviously, I pray for them, obviously, to become wow. Muslim. Um, it's one of, my, really one of my greatest wishes, of course, because you want your parents to, obviously, go to Jannah. You want them to also, also see how it actually, how the beauty of Islam as well. You want to see, uh, you want them to actually know why you uh, became Muslim, why you do this, why you do this. And yeah, just obviously f for them, just because in the first place it's for them that they obviously have a better life and also then obviously a better afterlife. The change within you, that, does that make the difference to you that you're giving up lots of things like uh, dating, uh, drinking, the food of course, a lot of what well, easier to have. <laughs> um, do you miss them a lot or you don't? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In terms of um, dating, I said like I never really did that to be fair. And drinking, I never drank much either. But life has become difficult now, isn't it? Like you have to have a halal food. You have to, uh, um, you can't have interest-based um, money. Yeah, you, that you need to give difficult. charity. You need to fast. You need to pray five times. <coughs> you need to be kind to people. Even if they're not Muslim, you have to be very <laughs> kind. You're not allowed to bully them. You're not allowed to swear at them. You know, these are conditions of being yeah. faithful to Allah. You're not allowed to backbite. You're not allowed to, uh, you know, being negative about other religions. You know, it's really, really <coughs> interesting when people see Islam as a whole, not mm. just picking and choosing. Yeah, I think uh, the thing about this for me as well as and what I see people like, because people always talk about the rules, about the rules this, rules that, can I do this, can I do that? But in the end, it's like when you are Muslim, if you properly believe, then the belief in Allah comes first. And once you have that, the other stuff will fall into place over time. Even if you have problems with one or the other things, if somebody may know some people like just like to swear, for example. Um, but over time, if they truly want to improve, overall as Muslims, as humans in general, it will, at some point, they will go to pl get to a place where they don't do this anymore. And in general, with most of the rules, I think, if you are practicing, if you want to make an effort to be, become a better Muslim, it will eventually, you, you will eventually just have to do it because you know it's wrong. Obviously not everybody does it, but I think in general, like if somebody really wants to improve themselves, they are able to. Okay, I've, I have a, um, a question, a few, few questions left. Mm. I'll, 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 make it, I'll end it up. Um, now you are a Muslim, a proud Muslim, mashallah, a proud Muslim. You choose to become Muslim. When you pray, how do you feel? Because remember, prayer <laughs> before and now is totally different. Yeah. When, when our Christian friends are praying, it's like a dua, right? Mm -hmm. When we pray, it's more like a, a yoga style. <laughs> um, you bow, you put your head <laughs> in the floor, and you cry to God, and you talk to Him directly. You have a direct communication with God, you know? So how do you feel? Mm -hmm. it, it Can you describe your mm -hmm. inner soul? Or how do you feel? Um, it depends. Like Obviously, there are days where you feel more uh, emotional, less emotional, but in general I feel it feels very calming. It feels very um, good in a way of also, because obviously it is uh, an obligation you have to do. So obeying God, in general obeying Allah, it's something that just feels right in a way. So you just, you know you're doing something that you're supposed to be doing anyway. It's not something that you should have to go out of your way completely to do it. It's something that you obviously should have in you, that you should enjoy doing as well. So for me, it's when I do it, I usually feel, as I said, calm. I also feel after I'm done, it's just, it feels good to have done 
something like this. It feels good. I feel like yeah, I've accomplished another thing today. When you're doing your sujood, when you go to put your head down and glorify God, your first sujood, how did you feel? The first, sorry? Your first sujood, when you put your head in the floor and when you're glorifying God, how did you feel? Hmm. What was your emotion going behind? It was... Difficult. I can't remember the first time I probably So, okay, prayed. forget the first time. Because you know, like, you, this is a learning process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. What was the best part you had and how was the feeling? The best part, I think it was one, a few times when obviously I had some problems going on in life, just like this or this. And then you obviously pray, you, you ask uh, Allah for, for, or you ask for something or you ask for help or anything. And just, it helps to know you can actually obviously directly talk to Allah and ask for help, ask for whatever you need, or even just um, have, in a way, company. Uh, in a way, be, um, you just have a connection. Have a connection, and, uh, basically also talk like, a, like if you have anything that obviously is on my mind, anything that I can just let it out, basically. Wow. In Sujud, or even after when I make Dua, you just let it out, and it helps a lot. Alhamdulillah. If you had, uh, I don't, I don't, it doesn't look like you had any other choices. Like everything <laughs> is bringing you close to what Islam is in it. In the beginning, you can see that everything is linking you towards the Shahada. Mm. And you're, you're happy. Yeah. Uh, did you feel that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For me, it was a lot of the reasons, obviously, that brought me closer were personal reasons. How it is for many people. Um, but yes, it was a lot of things, like small coincidences or bigger things that just happening in my life that I didn't have any control over. It just all pushed me towards uh, this path. So, and for me it was at some point, um, my thinking was, well, how many coincidences can there be before the, I can see a pattern there? Because at some point, like if you have just like, like stuff piling on and on and on, at some point you have to see, okay, there's, they can't just all be like just randomly happening. If you have a chance to speak to the whole world, mm. Um, firstly, um, non-Muslim world, hmm. what would you say? And the second one, if you're the Muslim world, you have a chance to say it to them, what would you say? Hmm. In terms of non-Muslim, obviously I think about my, my parents and general friends or people I know before, it, was, it would be mostly, if you like, don't like something or have views about it one way or the other, always try to actively find out if you are right about something. Don't just, and something I fall myself into as well, before and now as well sometimes, that when you hear something, you take it at face value, you don't question it, you just go with it, instead of actually looking it up yourself, like maybe talking to somebody who knows some stuff, um, talking to people, obviously, who are in certain situations, like in this case, Muslims, talk to Muslims, uh, and just like try to get your own like, opinion on it, instead of just following other people's opinion. Okay, a Muslim world. Muslim world, um, in general, I would just say a lot of, obviously, I think I've seen, not personally here, alhamdulillah, it's in London, obviously, where I live, and the, the people I interact with are very, uh, honestly, great. Um, but I see a lot of people uh, falling into uh, us versus them kind of mentality, where they um, just basically see themselves or their own group, whatever this group is, as like the, the, the one group, the best group, and sometimes quite like to put others down. And I think it's just, a, in general, a very bad, just a very counterproductive thing to do. So, uh, not to be judgmental, is that what you're saying? In, in or, a way, yeah. Or ask on them, shouldn't be ask on them. That's yeah, it's just, especially the between Muslims, there should be a, a unity, there should be a, a, obviously a brotherhood. Um, that in the end, we're still all Muslims, we still should work together. How, how, how about the with non-Muslim relationship should be? Non-Muslims? Yeah, with non-Muslim. So Muslim mm. world with non-Muslim world. Yeah, I think in, t in general it should be obviously respectful. It should definitely not be in any way bad. Obviously, we even learn that we are supposed to treat them well, treat them in a good manner. So we also shouldn't obviously show them uh, or not, not act bad towards them in any way. Brilliant. Um, you know, you are um, you're learning about the... Do you have any ambitions uh, about yourself that you want to do, be calm? something or how you're studying you about yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to first and foremost obviously uh, memorize more Quran. Um, I've been uh, trying to memorize you know, surah here and there like uh, sentence by sentence. It's 
going rather well, alhamdulillah. Uh, otherwise, uh, learning some dua, obviously because there are a lot of them. So obviously just learning one at a time. Because it is a lot, especially when you start. And in a year, you, you learn a lot, but you still know nothing in a way. And it is in general like then also becoming more grounded in the faith itself. So becoming more uh, secure in what I'm doing, who I am, what I believe. So that when obviously I have to think or I have things to think about, questions I have, I can actually answer them or know where to find the answers to. So it's not to go into a situation where I'm like thinking about something too much, thinking, ah, oh, why is this, why is that? And yeah, just in general, going to, my ambition is to become someone who knows, I was very grounded in, in, in Islam, in who I am as a Muslim. Um, the support from the Muslim community, um, how is it? Are they helpful? Are they, are they helping you? Or are they being friendly? How is it? Yeah. Um, as I said before, Alhamdulillah, I had no negative experiences so far myself. You, you hear things on the internet or other places, and I believe there are obviously problems sometimes, but for me personally, uh, all the people I know here, even at the mosque, also here, everybody has been helpful. Everybody is always interested. Of course, I've answered the, the questions today like 100,000 times. It feels like 100,000 times at this point, <laughs> which I always love to talk about anyway. But, and in general, like, it's very helpful. Most people want to help one way or the other. Um, we'll obviously be very welcoming, will try to help you, will we'll sometimes uh, gift, gift you less more books, a dua book, uh, um, different like things, or even invite you to the house to have some food, invite you over during uh, Ramadan. Did you fast your, uh, the Ramadan? Yes, I did. How was it? Just lastly, I'm <laughs> sorry, I forgot oh. that one. How was it for experience? The, the for first you? week was very bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I, I was fasting before, I tried to, I tried to do Monday and Thursdays, Okay. Um, but obviously, it doesn't work. It doesn't happen all the time. But I tried to. So I was used to fasting. In principle, okay. but obviously, fasting for a whole month, the first week was quite a challenge because I wasn't used to uh, rationing my water in terms of like actually drinking enough during the night. So the next day I was just half dead. Alhamdulillah. You know what? Because there's a lot of teaching within the fasting as well. Practically, you actually do because Allah told you to do it. And um, when it comes to understanding other human beings around the world, that what they're going through, man, is crazy. No water, no food in other some places. When you, f when you do fasting, you actually feel that. Practically, you feel that for them. You feel sorry for them. And that's why charity is one of the main object in Islam as well. You, know, you give a zakah, you give a charity, and you feel for them. So really, really interesting uh, um, combination of Islamic uh, um, uh, belief and the actions are. You have one minute to um, tell our viewers um, um, about your journey in one minute, if you could tell the viewers. To Some advice to our young people, to, to our young Muslims. To young Muslims. Some advice uh, in one minute. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I think is the most important thing is just actually go out and try and look for good resources. Try and find a good imam near you or even friends, uh, other brothers, other sisters, and that actually know their stuff well. Because a lot of people, they know some things, and a lot of people think they know a lot of things. And finding the correct resources, the good resources, I think is the most important part. Because as soon as you found someone you can trust, and you know they are sincere, and they just know whatever they obviously preach, what they say, at this point, it's really then obviously on you to also internalize what you're being told, what is the correct path. And yeah, in general, it's also obviously living here, obviously in London, in the West, it can be for a lot of people I've seen it can be quite difficult because there's so much things around you you can't do, you cannot do, like I was in Austria. Um, basically, all the, all the food is pork anyway. <laughs> so it's difficult, but in the end, if you, I think if you want to make an effort, if you, want to, if you make an effort, there's always a way to go about it. Um, may Allah reward you for everything you've done. And um, thank you for making time for me. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed talking to you. It was a pleasure. And it was a learning process. So, dear brothers and sisters, um, we're just about to finish. We don't have time anymore. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm sure you enjoyed it too. 
And if we made any mistakes, um, it's not intentional, please do forgive us and hope to see you again, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.